Hi, I'm John the Engineer Turmel, and tonight I'm going to participate in the saddleback debate between Barack Obama and John McCain, their first debate. There's a chance there's going to be a North American Union, and if ever there were, I'd be running for President or Prime Minister of that Union, so I may as well take this opportunity to explain what I could do for not only Canada, but the United States and the world as well. So I'm going to be throwing in my answers and one-liners to these uh, arguments made by the other candidates, and I hope you appreciate the errors they're making and the ways they could be fixed. Okay, we've got one last uh, time. I've got a bunch more, but let me just ask you one about evil. Does evil exist? And if it does, do we ignore it? Do we negotiate with it? Do we contain it? Do we defeat it? Uh, evil does exist. Uh, I mean, I think we see evil all the time. Mm -hmm. We see evil in Darfur. Mm -hmm. uh, we see uh, evil, some sadly, on, on the streets of uh, our cities. What he calls evil, I call desperate. I have a different definition of evil. Imagine a game of musical chairs, where at the end of the game, the loser doesn't eat. Well, it would get to be a pretty tough game, wouldn't it? And if somebody gave somebody an elbow so they wouldn't go hungry, you'd go, Oh, look, evil! He gave him an elbow. Or if someone tripped somebody, Oh, evil! Well, actually, I think that the evil is making the people play an elimination game which forces them to act that way. Now, mortgage means death gamble in Latin and French. Mort meaning death, gage meaning gamble. Everybody borrows 10, everybody owes 11, and at the end of the game, only nine guys come up with 11 and eat, and the 10th guy in the old days became a slave who could be worked to death, and in these days, he becomes broke with his family going hungry and suffering poverty. So yeah, there's a lot of bad that goes on in coping with this elimination, mortgage, death gamble people are forced to play. But to call that evil, in comparison with the evil of the men who had the power to bank it without interest, without creating the death gamble, and who chose to subject humanity to such an evil contract. They are satanic. They are evil. For instance, Jesus didn't beat up the gamblers, the hookers, the drug addicts, the murderers, the thieves. Jesus attacked the bankers in the temple for their loan shark activities. And you just have to check. He was definitely against loan sharking and that's evil when you force people to fight to the death over not enough money, knowing that those who come up short will go hungry. Um, we see evil in parents who uh, viciously abuse their children. Mm. And I think it has to be confronted. Unfortunately for Senator Obama, he's got the difficult job of fighting all of these evil symptoms that he describes without realizing where is the evil cause. I've spent the last 30 years trying to reprogram the bank's computers worldwide to operate interest-free and get rid of the evil that forces humanity to compete to the death in the financial game of mortgage death gamble. Uh, it has to be confronted squarely, and, and one of the things that uh, I strongly believe is that uh, you know, we are not going to as individuals be able to erase evil from the world that is god's task well yes getting rid of a pandora's box of evils he would think would be god's task but getting rid of the symptoms isn't really that difficult when you know how to get rid of the cause and of course reprogramming the bank's computers to operate interest free would eliminate the mortgage death gamble that forces everybody to fight over not enough money poverty and end that horrible evil so yeah if you don't know the cause of the evil fighting all the different evils you perceive those symptoms might seem to be a godlike task but if you understand where the switch is the on off switch for the evil well all of a sudden it just becomes a simple engineering task but we can be soldiers in that process and and we can uh 
We can confront it. Sure, we can be soldiers fighting off all the evil symptoms we see, or we can be engineers switching off the cause. When we see it, now, the, 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 the one thing that I think is very important is for us to have some humility in how we approach the issue of confronting evil. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, a lot of evil has been perpetrated uh, based on the claim that we were trying to confront evil. Doing in, in the name of good. In the name of good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, one thing that's very important is having some humility in, in, in recognizing that, uh, uh, you know, we, we, just because we think our intentions are good doesn't always mean that we're going to be doing good. Sure, it's easy to screw up when you're fighting evil symptoms without knowing the evil cause. Defeat it. He doesn't know what it is, but he's going to defeat it. A couple of points. One, if I'm president of the United States, my friends, if I have to follow him to the gates of hell, I will get Osama bin Laden and bring him to justice. I will do that, and I know how to do it. I will get that done. Yeah, but bin Laden didn't do 911. The FBI doesn't even have an indictment out against them. That's what was so funny about Afghanistan. Here's George Bush, the sheriff, saying to the Taliban, give me Osama bin Laden, we've got all this evidence against him. And they said, well, okay, show us what you got. Send us a normal request for extradition. And Bush said, no, just turn him over or I'm going to invade. Because he had no evidence. He had no indictment. And when he didn't produce the indictment and the Taliban wouldn't hand over the accused guy, George Bush invaded without any evidence, without any indictment. And it's not true. Bin Laden couldn't even have done it. No one, no one should be allowed to take thousands of American, innocent American uh, lives. Well, you don't see John in the 911 truth movement looking for the real guys who did it. Um, of course, evil must be defeated. My friends, we are facing the transcendent challenge of the 21st century, radical Islamic extremism. Uh, not long ago in Baghdad, Al-Qaeda took two young women who were mentally disabled and put suicide vests on them, sent them into a marketplace, and by remote control detonated those suicide vests. If that isn't evil, you have to tell me what is. Evil is dropping bombs on innocent civilians. You did that, didn't you, Senator? And we're going to defeat this evil. And the central battleground, according to David Petraeus and Osama bin Laden, is the battles is, a, is, a, is Baghdad, Mosul, Basra, and Iraq. And we are winning and we are succeeding, and our troops will come home with honor and with victory and not in defeat. And that's what's happening. I don't have to be as gentle as Senator Obama. He's delusional. He's the guy who thought that General Petraeus wandered around Baghdad without armor. Imagine. And he's now telling us he's going to come back with victory and that the battle in Iraq is the central point in all this. Hey, Iraq was flat on its back before the invasion. Nothing was going on there. Started in chasing the Taliban, right? The guys who did 911. And then they managed to sucker the American population into believing, more than 50%, that Iraq had somehow done 911. So, anyway, nobody falls for that anymore. And we have. And we face this threat throughout the world. It's not just in Iraq, it's not just in Afghanistan. Our intelligence. People tell us Al-Qaeda continues to try to establish cells here in the United States of America. Ooh, the Al-Qaeda boogeyman. But wasn't Al-Qaeda started by the CIA? And I bet Al-Qaeda's still working for the CIA. My friends, we must face this challenge. We can face this challenge, and we must totally defeat it. And we're in a long struggle. But when I'm around the young men and women who are serving this nation in uniform, I have no doubt. None. He has no doubts about sending those young men and women into harm's way in Iraq to win victory for, win victory against terrorism. Ooh, scaredism.